As we approach the end of the 2021 season, certain teams have surprised us thus far and others have been disappointing. In the case of the Portland Trailblazers, they fall somewhere in the middle. Going into the season, I was really excited about this Blazers team and I thought they'd be the 4 seed out west. As of now they sit in 6th, albeit just a game back of the Mavs for 5th, but something about this team has been underwhelming. In my opinion, that something is a combination of two things. Number one, Portland has been very stagnant over the years, and two, they don't have the assets to drastically improve their roster. So as a result, this team is kinda just there. Year in and year out, Portland has been a good regular season team, and they can be a tough out in a playoff series, but I don't think we viewed them as anything more than that. In today's video, I want to discuss the problems with this franchise, why they haven't been able to put together a championship caliber team, and what I think they should do going forward. Murray, inside, incredible! Oh, the run with no regard for human life! They do have a timeout, decide not to use it, Curry, way downtown, bang, bang, oh what a shot from Curry! Ever since Damian Lillard was a rookie, I have been a huge fan of his game. However, it wasn't until the 2015-16 season that I segued from mainly watching Blazers highlights into actually watching a lot of their games. Now, if you don't remember, Portland was not expected to be good that season. LaMarcus Aldridge had just signed with the Spurs, and Dame was the only starter remaining from the year prior. However, the Blazers surprised everyone by going 44-38, which was good for 5th place in the conference. They did have a pretty young roster at the time, so the logical thing to do would be to let the team grow and build organically through the draft. Unfortunately, Portland is one of the franchises that spent a crazy amount of money in the 2016 offseason after the salary cap rose. That summer, the Blazers matched a four-year $75 million offer sheet for Alan Crabb, brought back Myers Leonard and Mo Harkless on pretty big contracts, signed Festus Azili to a two-year $16 million deal, and maybe worst of all, they agreed to a four-year $70 million pact with Evan Turner. As expected, these players were very hard to trade over the years, which limited the flexibility of this roster. So Portland's first big mistake was that they tried to go from good to great far too quickly, and like I mentioned, they spent so much money in the 2016 offseason that it was hard for them to make any big moves or signings. As a result, Portland's roster was pretty much the same from 2015 to 2019. Even through the draft, this front office has struggled to add significant pieces in recent years. In 2017, they traded up for the 10th pick which got them Zach Collins, and then they used the number 26 pick to select Caleb Swanigan. Zach Collins is still young, but he's been incredibly injury prone and Swanigan is already out of the league. What makes these choices so bad is that Bam Adebayo was picked just 4 spots after Collins, and Kyle Kuzma was selected immediately after Swanigan. Moving on from that tragedy, 2018 and 2019 were pretty good drafts for Portland as they brought in Anthony Simons, Gary Trent, and Nasir Little, but come 2020 the Blazers front office was back to their old ways. Remember how the Blazers jumped the gun with all the money they doled out in 2016? Well, some people would argue that they made an equally bad choice when they gave up their 2020 and 2021 firsts for a role player in Robert Covington. Their 2020 pick turned out to be Isaiah Stewart, and mock drafts are projecting that that 2021 first will be used on Jalen Johnson, a 6'9 wing with a ton of upside. Looking at Covington, he's the kind of player that should have fit in perfectly next to Dame and CJ. He's a very versatile defender, he doesn't demand the ball or expect a lot of touches, and this season he's shooting very well from 3. However, Covington's 3 and D playstyle has done little to improve this team, especially on the defensive end where they rank 29th in defensive rating. This inability to make use of the talent on this roster brings me to the third and final problem with this team, and that is coaching. Terry Stotts was hired by Portland back in 2012, and they've essentially been the same team ever since. Other than the 2015 and 2018 seasons, the Blazers have been a bad defensive team under Stotts' watch, and on top of that, he's not exactly an offensive mastermind either. I will give Stotts some credit, I do like the way he's used centers like Mason Plumlee or Yusuf Nurkic's passers, he has some nice sets to get CJ open looks, and I like that he puts Damon positions to attack downhill, but for the most part, the success of this Blazers offense has to do with the incredible shot creating and shot making abilities of their backcourt. The main reason why Stotts has kept his job for as long as he has is not because of his coaching ability, but because he has the support of Damian Lillard. So to sum it all up, Portland has been an extremely stagnant team due to poor coaching, and because of their tendency to spend or give up too much in an attempt to make short-term improvements. In a way, I can understand why the Blazers have acted the way they have. It's not often that you get a player that is not only as talented as Damian Lillard, but who is also extremely loyal as well. That being said, you want to appease that player by keeping the people he likes in-house, while also trying to make the most out of his prime years. Unfortunately, me and a lot of other people have been making videos on the Portland Trailblazers because this organization has failed to build a contender around Lillard. With that being said, here's my view on what the Blazers should do going forward. 
First and foremost, I'm not in the camp that's pushing for a Damian Lillard trade. Obviously, you could get a lot in return for Dame this summer or at some point next season, but at the same time, he is a superstar level player that won't be a free agent until 2025, and he's consistently shown his loyalty to this franchise. You could very well trade Lillard for some young players that A, never reach the level that he's on, or B, aren't nearly as loyal as Dame is and end up leaving the team in the future. Before they bring in or get rid of any players though, Portland will have to move on from Terry Stotts as I touched on. We know that Dame has been an advocate for him, but I do wonder if other players have already started to tune Stotts out. Sometimes teams just need a new voice in the locker room, and Portland may be one of those teams. There are reports that the Blazers are interested in Jason Kidd, Nate McMillan, Dave Yeager, Chauncey Billups, or Brent Barry as possible candidates to replace Stotts next year. Personally, I'd love for Portland to bring in Chauncey Billups. Billups was a five-time All-Star, a Finals MVP, and in comparison to the other candidates, I feel like he could relate a bit more to Damon CJ as far as playstyle goes. On top of that, this Portland team needs a coach with a defensive mentality, and Billups was a great defender that played for a tough, gritty Detroit team during the prime of his career. Once they have a new coach, the front office has to hold on to their draft picks. Even if you're a playoff team, picks are so valuable because they can be used in a blockbuster trade, or they could provide you with an abundance of young talents when you actually do make a big time move, you only have to give up some of your young assets and not all of them. Collins, Simons, and Little are some nice pieces, but Portland is going to need to offer more than that if they want to bring in an all-star caliber player in a trade. As far as major roster moves go, it's unrealistic to expect Portland to make any major signings this summer. First of all, they have little to no cap space, and any money they spend this offseason will probably be used to bring back Zach Collins, Norman Powell, Mello, and Ennis Cantor. Carmelo and Cantor likely won't ask for much more than a vet minimum, and most front offices are stubborn when it comes to their belief in the players they drafted or traded for, so I expect Collins and Powell to be back with the team as well. However, this is not a video where I solely predict what Portland will do. This is a video where I give my opinion on what I think they should do, and if I were in that front office, I would look to break up the Dame and CJ backcourt by trading CJ McCollum after this season. For one, it's hard to win with two small guards when neither of them are elite on defense, and two, these guys will combine to take up a huge portion of the Blazers' payroll over the next few seasons. That being said, here is a potential CJ McCollum trade that the Blazers could make. The deal would send CJ to the Heat in return for Goran Dragic, Tyler Hero, Casey Okpala, and a top 10 protected first in 2024. Dragic's an expiring contract, Okpala is a lengthy and athletic young prospect, Tyler Hero has a ton of scoring potential, and the Blazers also get a first on top of that. This trade is very interesting for the Heat because it would mean that CJ would be their starting point guard, however, I think he could be great in that role. If Miami brings back Oladipo and Ariza this summer, we could be looking at a starting lineup of CJ McCollum, Oladipo, Jimmy Butler, Ariza, and Bam Adebayo in Miami. For Portland, the point of any of these trades would be to add to their young core, bring in additional draft picks, and obtain more cap flexibility. If the Blazers were to go through with that Heat trade and also resign Carmelo, Cantor, Zach Collins, and Norman Powell, this is what their rotation would be looking like. In comparison, keeping CJ means that you remain stagnant for another year, and you are essentially cap locked with him and Dame on the same team. Having cap space for the 22 free agency period would allow Portland to make offers for guys like Marcus Smart, Aaron Gordon, or Julius Randle who would fit in very nicely next to Dame. Even if they struck out in 2022, they could be players in 2023 and go after free agents such as Harrison Barnes, Jeremy Grant, or Miles Turner. Hypothetically speaking, let's say the Blazers hold on to and use their 2022 and 2023 selections, sign a two-way wing in Jeremy Grant as a free agent, and use bird rights to bring back some of the vets on this team, they would be in a great position. Not only would the team be deep, but it would have a nice mix of vets and young talent, and don't forget they would also have a tough, gritty coach in Chauncey Billups at the helm. In addition, the young assets that they accumulated would allow them to make an offer for any star player that becomes available on the market. If Kawhi Leonard leaves the Clippers, Paul George is someone that could become available. Maybe the Timberwolves continue to struggle and Carl Anthony Towns wants out of Minnesota, or maybe the Pacers decide to blow things up a few years from now and look to move DeMontis Sabonis. Yes, these are maybe scenarios at the end of the day, but by moving on from CJ, it gives Portland the ability to make a legitimate offer when a big time player does become available. So to sum up my plan for the Blazers, I would start by firing Terry Stotts and replacing him with Chauncey Billups to improve the team's defense, and after that I'd look to trade CJ for some young players, draft picks, and expiring contracts. With that newfound cap flexibility, I'd target players such as Marcus Smart, Jeremy Grant, Julius Randle, or Miles Turner in free agency to improve the two-way capabilities of this team. With LeBron getting older, the West will become more and more open over the years, and I feel that a deep team with a defensive-minded head coach that is led by a superstar in Damian Lillard would be enough to get Portland out of the West one year. But if it turns out that that's not enough to win a championship, Portland would have the young assets, contracts, and picks to make a big-time trade in order to really go all-in on Dame's prime.
I hope that by talking about the recent issues with this trail basis organization, and by discussing the potential benefits of CG McCollum trade, that I was able to get you on board with this course of action for the Blazers. Obviously, my opinion is not superior or above anyone else's, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on what Portland should do going forward down in the comments below. That's going to wrap it up for today's video, and with all that being said, I'm out.